In this video, I'll show you how you can create your own custom multiple choice picture question. Okay, so I did this video a couple of years ago with an earlier version of Adobe Captivate. But more importantly, um, as time goes on, I sort of changed my process for building custom interactions like this. So I wanted to share my most recent version of custom multiple choice question slides. In this particular example, of course, with the flexibility of Adobe Captivate, you can use almost anything as a button. So we're gonna use pictures of politicians, as you can see here. I've got four images. In this case here, uh, we have a grayscale image to start off with. It's uh, already set up to use as a button. And I've created my own custom state called selected. And when you choose selected, of course, the image will turn from black and white to color to indicate that this is what you selected. And uh, we'll write an advanced action for each one of these. We'll need a variable to keep track of which one we've selected. And then we're gonna write an advanced action for our submit button that looks at those variables and provides the appropriate feedback in this multi-state object that I have here. And as you can see, the multi-state object contains feedback like you must make a selection, incorrect, or correct in the case of Justin Trudeau. We have a reset button because I think it's important to not only reset this slide when you arrive on it the first time, but give your learners the opportunity to reset the slide whenever they wish. The submit button, of course, is pretty self-explanatory. And the continue button will not be visible in output right away. It will only appear when you've made the correct selection. So, so let's, uh, let's start off with the first thing that we're going to need. We're going to need four different variables to uh, keep track of here. So I'm going to click on the project drop-down menu and select variables. I'm going to add a new variable. And I'm just going to call these uh, the first name. And I like to start my variables with an underscore, uh, the first name of each politician here. So uh, we'll also choose Aaron, who for Aaron O'Toole, Justin Trudeau, and Eves. Okay, so I have one variable for each politician. I can go ahead and close this now. Now the first thing I'm going to do is write an advanced action for the selection of one of my politicians here. So we'll start with Jasmeet here on the left hand side here. I'm going to click on project and select advanced actions here. And we'll just move this aside so we can see who we're dealing with here. And we'll call this Jasmeet. Now the first thing we need to do is update the tracking variable for Jasmine. But in case this is the second time a user has selected one of the buttons, we also want to make sure we reset the other variables as well. So we're going to assign Jasmine with a literal value of one. We can actually copy this and paste it in several times so that we just need to change which variable we're updating here. So we'll choose Aaron and we'll assign that a literal value of zero. We'll choose Justin. Again, literal value of zero. And then the last one will be Eves. Okay. The other thing we're going to need to do is to change the appearance of the buttons. So we're going to change the state of Jasmine Sing to selected. Change the state of Aaron O'Toole back to normal in case he was already selected. Change the state of Justin Trudeau back to normal. And the same thing for Yves-Francois Blanchet, back to normal. 
So the other thing we want to do is if the learner has already submitted an incorrect answer, they're going to see a feedback message here. So when we select another answer, we want to reset that feedback message as well. So we're going to change the state of our feedback message back to normal, which is simply a transparent rectangle. So this is good for selecting Jasmine here. We'll save that as an action, click OK. But we're going to need three more versions of this advanced action. So I'm going to duplicate this advanced action and we're going to change the name to Aaron. We're going to change our assignment to the variable to assign to the Aaron variable a value of one. And we're going to change the, the multi-state object to show Aaron O'Toole as selected. We can update that, click OK, and then we'll duplicate it once more, this time for Justin Trudeau. And we'll change the assignment back to zero for Aaron. And we'll change Aaron O'Toole back to normal. In this case, select Justin Trudeau. Update that action. And we'll duplicate it once more, this time for Eves. So what we'll do is change our selections here that were previously on Justin Trudeau and make sure that Yves Francois Blanchette is selected not only for the variable, but for the multi-state object there. So let's update that action, click OK, click Close. So now what we need to do is go to our Actions tab and change these one by one to execute advanced action and choose the appropriate person here. So execute advanced action, Aaron, execute advanced action, Justin, and execute advanced action, Eves. Now we could continue to work on this, but let's just do a preview and make sure the selection part works. This is sort of the way I write advanced actions. I test it a little bit at a time to make sure that everything's working as I would expect it to. So here's our, our characters, our cast of characters here. So if I select Jasmeet Singh, he becomes color from black and white. If I choose Aaron, Jasmeet goes back to black and white. Everything's working here. One thing I see right off the bat that I would like to change is apply the hand cursor so that I can roll over and see that there is a difference, something I can click on, and we'll disable the click sound here. Here's a little tip if you want to make sure that all your buttons have these same settings, just click this little menu and apply to all items of this type, and that will ensure that the same settings are made elsewhere as well. So the next thing we want to do is we want to write our advanced action for submitting. This is a single advanced action, but it's going to contain multiple tabs. So let's go ahead and click on the project dropdown menu, select advanced actions, and we'll just call this one submit. So the first one, let's work with, uh, with the cast of characters left to right here. We'll start off with Jasmeet. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a conditional action. So we're checking to see if a condition is true and then running the appropriate actions if it is. So if the variable that contains Jasmeet is equal to the literal value of one, we're going to change the state of our feedback caption to the message associated with Jagmeet Singh. He's actually a wrong answer in this case, and that's all we need to do. Let's duplicate this decision tab, and we'll just relabel this Aaron for Aaron O'Toole. If the variable associated with Aaron O'Toole is equal to one, we're gonna change that feedback message to Aaron O'Toole. I'm gonna duplicate this once more, but I'm gonna skip Justin Trudeau, the correct answer, 
and do the answer for Eve's Blanchette. And uh, what we'll do here is if the variable for Eve's is equal to one, we'll change the feedback to Eve's Francois Blanchette. And now we'll go ahead and we'll do the Justin Trudeau one, because this one's gonna be a little more complicated. We'll type in Justin up here, also conditional action. So if this part is the same, if Justin is equal to the literal value of one, we're going to do a number of things. So the first thing I want to do is I don't want someone to change their answer once they've got it correct. So I'm going to disable Aaron O'Toole, disable Jasmeet Singh, disable Justin Trudeau, and disable Yves Francois Blanchet. So these are the buttons there. So they can no longer make a change. We're going to change the state of our feedback message to Justin Trudeau, where they'll get the correct message. We also want to hide our reset button. Hide our submit button. And show our next button okay and we have another one and we're just going to call this incomplete and also a conditional tab but this time we'll be checking the value of all four variables we'll say if the variable Aaron is equal to the literal value zero in other words you haven't selected him nor you've selected the other four so I'm just going to copy and paste that in and we'll make a small change here uh, to this. We'll add Jasmine. We'll add Justin. And we'll add Eves there. So if you've done none of these, we're going to change the state of our feedback caption to incomplete. So I think we're pretty much good to go. Let's save this as an action. Click OK and click Close. Now what we'll do is we'll make sure to apply that advanced action to our submit button. And uh, like before, I'm going to make sure that there's a hand cursor and disable click sound. And we'll do this here, apply all to the same style, which should be the continue and the reset button. Continue, of course, is go to next slide. There is one last advanced action that I'd like to include here, and that's a reset slide advanced action. It isn't necessarily required, but if you are allowing learners to return to this slide, you might need a reset button or a reset action for that matter. So let's go ahead and write that reset advanced action. Essentially what we're doing is we're returning everything back to the way it was by default. So if we've disabled those buttons, let's enable them. Let's change their state. We may not need this, but let's just make sure back to normal. Let's hide the continue button or next button as I've called it. And we will show the submit button and show the reset button. And we should probably return those variables back to zero too. So let's assign Aaron with a literal value of zero. Assign Jasmine with a literal value of zero. Assign Justin with a literal value of zero. And we've run out of room, so we're just going to press the Add button. And assign Eves with a literal value of zero. We'll save this as an action. Click OK. Click Close. And we'll assign that to the reset button 
by executing advanced action and choosing reset, but we'll also assign it to the on enter action of this slide. So we'll execute advanced action and we'll choose reset here. So let's test this out. I think everything should work according to plan here. So here we are, we've got our reset, our submit button here. Let's choose Jazz Meet, hit submit, incorrect. You've selected Jazz Meet Singh. Mr. Singh is the leader of the new Democratic Party of Canada. Try again. So let's try Aaron O'Toole, submit. Notice that when I clicked on Aaron, the previous feedback for Jazz Meet disappeared. That's incorrect. Let's try Justin Trudeau this time. There we go. We've selected him, submit. Correct, Justin Trudeau is Prime Minister of Canada and the leader of the Liberal Party. Click continue to proceed. So now you can press continue and continue with the rest of your project. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.